this presentation shall talk about the comparative anatomy of the uh, domestic animals, particularly you know, the uh, female reproductive tract. And in this presentation, we are going to focus on the uterus. The references for this presentation include the presentation of uh, Dr. John Parrish, a professor at the University of Wisconsin, on his uh, female reproductive comparative anatomy. We also have the presentation on the comparative female reproductive tract anatomy by Dr. Amit Sharma of India. So this presentation shall determine some important species differences in the female reproductive tract anatomy of domestic animals in terms of their anatomy as well as in their physiology. A typical uterus consists of two horns, a short body and a cervix. In terms of its location, it is usually located or situated in the pelvic cavity in the non-pregnant female. It is attached in the pelvic wall via the broad ligament. So the broad ligament that supports the uterus is known as the uh, mesometrium. The, for the parts of the uterus, we have the horns of the uterus. So we, we, have, we typically have the right and the left horn. So in the mare, the horns are shorter, are short, and their ends are blunt. In the bitch, the horns are considered to be very long. We also have the body of the uterus. The endometrial part of the body has mushroom-like non-glandular projection called the caruncles. Of course, the caruncles forms the placentum, and uh, it will be formed you know, by the connection between the caruncle and the cotyledon. Of course, that is found you know, in a uh, cow and the ewe. For the cervix of the uterus, it has mainly three to four folds, and that is in the cow, and that, that is uh, the annular rings. And the AI gun passes through the middle of the cervix, known as the cervical os, and that is in during you know, the artificial insemination in a cow. The uterus is the reproductive organ with the most species variations. So, for the type of the uterus, you now for the ewe, cow, doe, and the sow, it is considered to be bicornuate, um, meaning that you now it has a two uterine horns and one uterine body and one cervix. So for, for the sow, you know, the uterine horn is larger. So this is the uterine horn, and this is the uterine body. So since the sow is a polytopus animal, so it has a larger uterine horn. In the cow, you and doe, the external fusion makes the body appear large. And uh, the moderately, so for the cow, you and the doe, it has a moderately you know, developed uterine horns uh, due to the intermediate you know, degree of fusion. The mares, you know, the uterus is also bicornuate and it is previously bipartite. Again, uh, it is known as bicornuate because the uterus has is composed of two uterine horns or cornua of the uterus. So in mares, we have uh, two uterine horns, one uterine body, one cervix, and one vagina. In terms of the structure of the, ut the, the uterine body and the uterine horn, so it has a larger uterine body and a smaller uterine horns. And that is for the mare. So a relatively large uterine body and a short, poorly developed uterine horns are due to a high degree of the fusion of the paramesonephric duct. So we have here a comparison between the uterus of the ewe cow and the doe, the ruminants and the mare. So we'll start now start with the of course now the uterine horn. Both of them has the presence of the uterine horn, two uterine horns, and the uterine body as well as the cervix. One cervix, one uterine body. So this uh, type of uterus is again a bicornuate type of uterus again because it has two horns. Yung mare, it's also bicornuate and it is previously called as bipartite. In terms of the 
uh, we have here you know, the presence of the inter intercoinoa ligament in the U cow and the dough. And for the separation between the uterine horns, so the ruminant uterine horns are well separated as shown in the figure as compared to that of the uh, mare. In terms of the length of the uterine horns, so when, er, when we are going to compare the length of the uterine horns to that of the sow, the sow has a very long uterine horns, again, because the, uh, the sow is a politi politicus animal as compared to that of the mare. Uh, the mare has a very short uterine horns. We also have, uh, we can also compare you know, the uterus according to the cervix, you know, the structure of the cervix, because for the cow, uh, as well as the ewe and the doe, there is a presence of the annular rings, which are the transverse uh, structures or folds that are present in the cow. Uh, for the cow, it makes the passing of the artificial insemination catheter more difficult. And for the sow, uh, there are presence of mucosal prominences uh, that are present in the cervix. For the mare, of course, you have the presence of the uh, longitudinal folds, and this will be discussed uh, in detail in the cer cervix, and we are going to reach the cervix. Another type of bicornuate uterus is exemplified by the canine, bitch, and the queen. So for it, again, when we say bicornuate, it has two uterine horns. So for this animal species, they have a two uterine horns, one uterine body, one cervix, and one vagina. So in terms of the structure of the uterine body in the uterine horn, so this animal species has a very long uterine horns as compared to that of the uterine body. So small uterine body, long uterine horns. And of course, this is uh, similar to that of the sow, which has also a very long uterine body. Again, this is due you know, to a low degree of fusion of the paramesonephric ducts. The paramesonephric ducts are the structures that will later on developed into the female reproductive tract in the embryonic, uh, in, the, in the fetus. So again, the main reason for this is that uh, the, these animal species are polytopus. Another type of uteri is the duplex. So this is exemplified by the opossum, which is a marsupial, and the rabbit and the mouse. Uh, these are the structures now that can be found in the duplex uteri. So there are two uterine horn. You also have the two cervices and two vagina for the opossum. And uh, two uterine horns, uh, two cervices, and one vagina for the rabbit and the mouse. So we also have the simplex uteri, and that is seen in primates, especially in humans. So in this type of uteri, you know, there is a complete fusion of the paramesonephric ducts forming a single uterine body with no uterine horns. So this is now the structure of the simplex uteri in humans. One vagina, one cervix, one uterine body, and no uterine horns. What we have here now the structure of the human female reproductive tract now showing the ovary. We have here the tube uh, this is the uterine corpus or the body and the cervix. So in this case, now we have here the presence of the cysts now that are present in the ovary. So this uterine structure was removed from a woman. And what is wrong? And what type of uterus is this? Again, in this diagram, now there are two uterine horns. And of course, this is considered to be abnormal. For humans, now because this is a bicornuate type of uterus, and the normal type of uterus in humans is uh, simplex one, uh, the one with uh, well developed uterine body and no uterine horns. Also, this is normally not conducive to carrying pregnancy to term.